Hey, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you on this Friday, August 7th, for a morning devotion. I trust that you're doing well today, and I'm looking forward to spending this day that the Lord has made, serving Him and rejoicing in it. Welcome, everybody, and hope uh, that you have your Bibles with you, too. We're going to be looking in 2 Kings chapter 13 this morning together. So I'll give you a minute to find that in your Old Testament. 2 Kings chapter 13 this morning. And as you're finding that, um, why don't you guys just let me know what, uh, what you're thankful for this morning. It's a new day, so let's praise the Lord together. I'm thankful that i um, just been able to have a great week. We had Hudson's birthday this week. That was exciting for him. Uh, he wanted a fire truck, and he kind of got one, so he was excited about that. Um, what are you thankful for this morning? Anybody got something they want to share? Share it in there. We can rejoice together and thank the Lord. Thankful for an opportunity to to serve Him, reach out with His love. Um, thankful to be uh, home with the family today. So got a day home with with the crew. We've been playing some baseball together. It's been good family time. All right. See some of yours there. So. Thankful for a healthy family. We got my family. Family is certainly important. Um, God's blessed us, hasn't He? Today, we got some of our fam. I got some of our family coming here today. And can you go ask Mama for help with that, real quick? Okay. Well, Daddy's got to do the, the the Bible on the video this morning. Okay. So can you wait one second? Okay. All right. I'm thankful for Hudson. So we're in 2 Kings chapter 13, beginning in verse, verse 14. Um, let's read that together this morning. When Elisha became sick with the illness from which he died, King Jehoash, excuse me, Jehoash of Israel went down and wept over him and said, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. Elisha responded, Get a bow and arrows. And he shot a bow and arrows. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, Grasp the bow. So the king grasped it. And Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. And Elisha said, Open the east window. So he opened it. Elisha said, Shoot. So he shot. Then Elisha said, The Lord's arrow of victory. Yes, the Lord's arrow of victory over Aram. You are to strike down the Arameans of in Aphek, until you have put an end to them. Then Elisha said, Take the arrows. So he took them. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground. So he struck the ground three times and stopped. Then the man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have struck down Aram until you had put an end to them. But now you will strike down Aram only three times. Then Elisha died and was buried. Now the Moabite raiders used to come into the land in the spring of the year. Once, as the Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a raiding party, so they threw the man into Elisha's tomb, and when he touched Elisha's bones, the man revived and stood up. May God guide us in his word this morning as, as we read this. Um, so just a, a little bit of context for this passage uh, as we consider the, um, the Lord's arrow of victory. Uh, Israel was God's people. Uh, they were chosen to live in this land that God had given. They had become a great nation um, and, and became prosperous in this land. Uh, after King Solomon, the, the nation was divided, though. The northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah uh, were, were divided. And by and large, the northern kingdom had turned to idolatry. Here, uh, several centuries following uh, that split, Jehoash is described, if you just look up a little bit into verse um, 10, 
gives us a brief description that Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, became king over Israel in Samaria. He reigned 16 years, and he did what was evil in the Lord's sight, and he did not turn away from the sin of the Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. And so uh, Je Jehoash is an evil king, living in rebellion, living in idolatry. And the prophet Elisha is... Um, is alive at this time. He's a prophet of God. He's the successor of Elisha, who had been previously taken to heaven in a whirlwind. And, and Elisha has received a double portion of the spirit of Elisha. Uh, of Elisha. Um, and so basically to say he, he's walking closely with the Lord. The Lord has poured out his, his grace and his favor in his life. And and he has been used of God to communicate the Lord's will to his people. Here we see in Elisha's last days, he's becoming sick, and Jehoash gets worried. Uh, you hear him cry out in verse 14, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. What's interesting about that, that statement is the same statement that Elisha makes. Good morning, buddy. Can you hang on one second, please? All right, thank you. Just listen for a little bit. Um, so, uh, let me get my train of thought here again. Um, so, Jehoash's quote reveals his concern over the army of Israel. Now, uh, Israel throughout its history lived in times of, of, of fear of the enemies around them. And... Uh, just under the king previous to uh, Jehoash, Jehoah has the the Israel's uh, Israelite army had de been depleted quite significantly. Um, if you go up to about verse seven, you see they only have fifty horsemen, ten chariots, and ten thousand foot soldiers. Uh, so uh, Je Jehoash, the, the previous king's uh, successor, is is trying to rebuild that army. I would imagine, and he's fearful of of his surrounding armies. He's fearful of, of God's presence of departure, even though he's really been living as though God, uh, God doesn't exist. He's been bowing down to other idols. But Elisha knows the true strength of Israel. He knows, and this quote was actually the same thing that, that Elisha cried out when he saw um, Elisha's departure in that whirlwind, those chariots of fire. That, that took Elisha up to heaven. Uh, excuse me, Elijah. I know it's just parsing letters here. Elijah was Elisha's predecessor who was taken up to heaven, and Elisha witnessed that great world when he witnessed the chariots of fire and the horsemen of Israel on the mountainside uh, that, that would give um, previous uh, kings victory over the, uh, the surrounding armies. And so... Um, Elisha does an enacted prophecy and, and he uses this arrow. He tells him to grab the bow and shoot the arrow toward the east from where his enemies would come. Um, and he, he tells him to, uh, to grab the arrow and he calls it the, the Lord's arrow of victory in verse 17. So he's saying this represents the Lord's victory in your life. And the king um, takes the arrows as Elisha tells him to. And he, Elisha says, strike the ground. Uh, this, this represents the Lord's arrow of victory. He's, he's telling him to pick up that arrow and, and use it as if it's, it's the instrument of victory. Um, and the army that you truly need uh, for protection. Um, but Jehoash's faith is less than enthusiastic. He only strikes the ground, we see, three times uh, in verse uh, 19. Uh, Elijah gets angry with him. He says, you should have struck the ground five or six times. Then the Lord would have completely taken care uh, of your, your problem with your, with your enemy, your, your neighbors that's looking to destroy you. Um, Jeho Jehoash's faith was less than enthusiastic. Uh, God's victory was available to him, but he lacked the faith and would not possess it uh, to the extent that God would have him to. And so as we read on in verse 22, we see kind of what happens as a result. King Hazael of Aram 
who oppressed Israel throughout the reign of Jehoahaz, but the Lord was gracious to them. He had compassion on them, and he turned toward them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was not willing to destroy them. Even now he has not banished them from his presence. Then King Hazael of Aram died, and his son Ben-Hadad became king in his place. Then Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, took back from Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, the cities that Hazael had taken in war from Jehoahash's father, Jehoahaz. Jehoash defeated Ben-Hadad three times and recovered the cities of Israel. So here we see it. It happens exactly as the prophet had described. Um, the enemies came against uh, Israel, but they were only able to defeat them three times. Um, and so, again, this is this is a specific story to a specific people living in a specific time. Um, but but I would ask you, as you consider the Lord's arrow of victory, how do you respond to the victory that has been promised to you? Uh, Jeho Jehoash had the victory promised to him. He he had shot the Lord the arrow to the east from where his enemies were coming, and was promised. This is the Lord's arrow of victory. The Lord is able. Uh, the Lord is the one who is our warrior, who fights our battles against the enemy. Uh, of course, at this time, it was the enemy was Aram uh, to the people of Israel. But for we who are in Christ, we too have been promised a victory. Uh, we know that the cross is our victory, that Jesus has accomplished uh, forgiveness of sin, victory over death through his death, through the nails and the cross, and um, that he died for our sin. Uh, the cross is our arrow of victory. We know that Jesus has accomplished for us. And and what enthusiasm does that bring to your heart this morning? Um, Christ has promised you victory over Satan, sin, and death. Uh, that there is nothing that can separate you from his love this morning. Um, not your flesh, uh, not those who would come against you, uh, not Satan, um, not anything. Uh, nothing can separate us from the love of God for those who are in Christ Jesus. But how do you respond to that victory that has been given to you? Are you less than enthusiastic? Uh, are you only pounding the ground maybe three times? Or are you willing to, to put it, enough enthusiasm into it five or six times? Um, no, that's figuratively speaking there. Um, what enemies are you fearf fearful of? Are you fearful of Satan? Are you fearful of the sin that uh, maybe you, you're worried of, of falling into again? Uh, victory is yours today. It's an amazing, gracious, and compassionate God who has provided that for you. Um, I hope that fills your heart with joy and faith this morning, knowing that God loves you, that he's a gracious and compassionate God who, who desires to give you all things. Uh, everything that has been uh, given to you uh, is the riches of heaven in Christ. And so our hearts should be filled with enthusiasm, with faith this morning, to trust in the Lord, uh, to know that he's promised us victory over sin, over death. And so we can proclaim that from the rooftops. Uh, we, can, we can share it boldly. We can embrace it wholeheartedly. And so I pray that you will as well this morning. Uh, would you pray with me today? Gracious God and Father, uh, we know that that we don't deserve your grace. Lord, we have rebelled from you, uh, but Lord, you have sent us your son, Jesus, to, to bring us forgiveness, to bring us eternal life. And you've given us victory through your power. You are our warrior. Lord, you fight our battles. Uh, Lord, no matter what we may be struggling with in this life, uh, we know those are all temporal struggles. And Lord, you have accomplished for us the the eternal victory over death. Our, our souls are secure with you. We can, we can follow you boldly. Uh, we can share you uh, without shame or fear. Lord, help us to, to live in your love and live in your grace uh, and that we may experience that victory daily as we walk by faith. Uh, Lord, I pray for those today who don't have that same confidence, who don't have that assurance, who maybe are less than enthusiastic today about that victory. Lord, that you would awaken in their hearts and in each of our hearts, a fresh sense of your presence, a fresh sense of your victory that you have given to us through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you and praise you today. 
We commit this day to you. Help us to walk by your grace uh, with great enthusiasm and great joy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Brothers and sisters, it's been good to spend this time with you two-dimensionally. Uh, and hope to see you this Sunday as we worship the Lord together. God bless you, and have a wonderful day. Want to say anything, buddy? No. No, okay. All right, Hudson's been patient, so i got to go give him some help now. Thank you, guys. Take care.